So this morning, I'll be chatting with Rodney Piggott, who is the president of the Tobago Writers Guild. And let's see what's happening in Tobago. Good morning, Rodney. Good morning, Gary. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. And I'm still smiling from ear to ear after that uh, cool children segment. Yes, I know, right? Yeah. Very talented How and very powerful. cool. Uh, imagine that, 10 years old and an entrepreneur already. Absolutely. Very powerful. Now, I understand that the Tobago Writers Guild is going to be hosting a lecture series on emancipation. Now, we just passed emancipation. Why at this point are we doing this lecture series? All right. And that's a very important question. Uh, we're doing this, of course, in conjunction with the Tobago Library Services, as we do every month. This is just one of our monthly um, events around the lectures. This one is going to be a panel discussion around the issue of our emancipation. Now, Carrie, coming into the month, August 1st, we celebrated our physical emancipation. Right. Uh, we know that chains and shackles were put on our ancestors. Those that had the keys to those physical chains and shackles at some point decided that it was no longer in their financial benefit to keep those physical chains on our ancestors. So they put the key in the lock, turn it, and set us free physically. Right. Leaving the end of the month now, leaving August month, we're now going to shift our focus to our mental emancipation. Because while we had the physical chains on our bodies, mental chains were being developed on our minds. And that key, we have that. So it's up to us, none but ourselves, can free our minds. I love the way in which you put that, because when you spoke about the physical change, I, I knew you were alluding to what the mental change would be. Could you describe for us, from your experience and from your knowledge, uh, what some of these mental chains are that we still see in society today? Well, we can see it, as you, as you so rightly put it. We, we can see it all around us. It has become almost like a norm from the foods we eat. Uh, when our ancestors were on the plantations, they were literally forced to eat certain foods, just the heavily salted pork, for instance. Uh, they would put a speculum in our mouth and hammer our teeth out, wow. sharing our gums and tongue to pour this pig slop down our throats because we wouldn't eat it. Now today, the salted pork and all these highly salted products, slave food, are part of our norms. We, we don't want to let them go. Uh, the need that our women feel to, to bleach their skin, and some men have a, a, a need to bleach their skin, uh, to fix our hair as if something's wrong with our naturally curly hair, and we must fix it. Um, so these are just some of the mental chains that are on our mind. When we look around and see that, uh, for instance, Port of Spain, we refuse to let that name go. Are we still Spain's port? Right. Uh, we have Fort King George. We have Crown Point. So the names of our oppressors are tattooed and branded on our streets, our cities, all around us. And this is part of the mental change where we refuse to let those things go. What do you think are some of the mechanisms by which they have uh, placed these mental chains upon the you know, the Afro diaspora, the African diaspora? What? Well, very good question. The, the torture was very, very instructive. They used the physical torture as a tool. As African people, we're a very spiritual people, very much in touch with the nature around us. We didn't live life uh, trying to conquer nature. We lived in harmony with nature. So we are very spiritual people. The physical torture that they place in our bodies, the constant whippings, uh, we try to make it through a day without getting whipped, um, burying a man in the sand, um, uh, pouring honey or maple syrup over his head and putting a brown bag with ants over it so that the ants will eat out his eyes in front of his wife and children strapping a, a, a pregnant woman to two horses and sending them in two directions. And as she split, 
in two and the fetus popped out, sicking the mangy dogs on which to eat them. So these sort of mental um, um, or actual physical torture place mental change in our minds, a fear resonated inside of us where we became very consumed with our physical well-being. So we were drawn out of our spiritual nature into a more physical dynamic where, as I stated, we just try to make it through the day without being whipped or tortured. We have not done anything to reverse that process, being ripped away from our culture, uh, the way we educated ourselves, uh, the way we observed a, a, a deity. Every people see a reflection of themselves in their deity. If you're Asian, Indian, it doesn't matter who you are. When you look at your deity, you see a reflection of your image. We were given an image of a deity that reflected our oppressors. And to this day, we still continue to keep that deity in our minds. So these are some of the mental chains that have been placed in our minds while we were going through the physical torture, and we have not done anything effective to reverse that process. That's right. And um, you know, that information and much more to come in the lecture series. Can you tell us quickly when does it start and how do people gain access? Absolutely. This is going to be on this Thursday. It is going to be at the Scarborough Library First Floor Activity Center. It is going to be at 5.30 p.m. Our panelists include Kamo Akili, Heather Gray, Laureen Boris Phillip, Opuku Ware, and our moderator is Deborah Moore Miggins. And this is a free lecture. The lectures remain free. And it's a conversation starter. We want people to come out with their discussions, their questions, their comments. And we're going to have a very interactive conversation with these panelists. All right, definitely something to look forward to. Thank you so much, Rodney Piggott, president of the Tobago Writers Guild, for sharing with us on that upcoming lecture series on emancipation. All right, we take a short break and we come back with much more. Stay with us.